Okay. Okay, well, we'll start on your screen. Let's see. So we had, this is the old homework assignment that mm -hmm. was review. Should we start with this? Well, um, I, let's just look at the questions. Uh, there was one question that you hadn't done before, the fourth question from question one. So I'll look at that. Uh, the fourth okay. question from question one. Let's see how we did with that. Okay, that seems fine. So it looks like you got that question correct. So let's take a look at this. Okay, that looks like a good answer for number two. I'll look at number three. Okay, uh, and for number three, what was your reasoning? So for part A, why is the right-hand molecule more reactive. Um, I guess one thing, one suggestion that you had made for considering the strength of a base is to look at it before it were to react and in that case you'd have a lone pair on the nitrogen that could resonate um, into this benzene ring um, leaving a positive charge in some of the resonance structures on that nitrogen and that would make it very not very um, basic or nucleophilic. Okay, good. That's a good explanation. By the way, um, I wanted to point out here why it's, it, it's good that you're giving that full explanation there verbally. Notice you can't just say um, that the left-hand molecule is uh, less basic because of resonance. You have to explain how the resonance works because notice in this case the molecule with resonance is less reactive whereas in problem two the molecule with resonance was more reactive. Resonance made it more reactive. So resonance can either help or hurt a reaction depending on the details. So it's good that you were giving the full explanation there. Okay, now how about for B? Why is the right-hand molecule more reactive in B? Um, much of the same reason. We have a lone pair on the nitrogen. And I guess, honestly, I didn't consider the molecule as a whole in this case. I was looking more at just the nitrogen, seeing that um, it would resonate and reveal a hidden positive charge on the nitrogen. Um, by the same token, it would actually make that oxygen perhaps more nucleophilic and acidic or basic. Um, so the nitrogen definitely would be a better base and nucleophile on the right, but I didn't think about the oxygen either. So uh, I think. I think still the nitrogen on the right is the stronger base, but that would be maybe a little hard to figure out. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, that could be a little bit difficult uh, to figure out, but uh, I was focusing on the nitrogens. Certainly the nitrogen on the right is more basic because it doesn't have a hidden positive charge. I think the nitrogen is just more basic uh, overall. In general, who's usually more basic, nitrogens or oxygens? How would you determine who's usually more basic, a nitrogen or an oxygen? Um, I would say an oxygen because it has more, um, it's further right on the chart, it's more electronegative. It is more electronegative. Uh, why, would that, why would that make it more basic? Um, it would be... Um, <laughs> I'm thinking it would be more, uh, it would be stronger to withdraw a hydrogen than a less electronegative um, molecule, but maybe that's not the right reasoning. <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, I guess I'm not sure how to tell. So, um, what's the definition of a base? It will receive a hydrogen and donate electrons. Okay. Now, it's, we, want, we don't want to say it's receiving a hydrogen, precisely. Uh, okay. Because uh, that doesn't indicate the charge. Remember, the most important factor in organic chemistry is the charges. So, uh -huh. what's a better word than saying that it's receiving a hydrogen that indicates the charge? What's the charge on the hydrogen that it's receiving? Uh, positive. That's right. Do you remember what we call a hydrogen with a positive charge? Proton. That's right. So, it's actually much better to say that it's receiving a proton. When you just okay. say a hydrogen, it kind of sounds like it's receiving a neutral hydrogen. So uh, in those definitions, we want to focus on the idea that uh, acids and bases involve transferring protons, which are positive hydrogens, because the most important factor in organic chemistry is the charges. Now let's first focus on the electron definition. Does a base donate or receive electrons? A base would donate electrons. That's right. So, who's the stronger base? Something that's more electronegative or something that's less electronegative? Mm. Less electronegative. That's right, because if something was highly electronegative, it wouldn't want to donate its electrons, it would want to hold on to them. That makes sense. So, who would normally be the stronger base, an oxygen or a nitrogen? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. So I think your original uh, logic there was incorrect. I think you were you were having trouble explaining your logic because the logic was incorrect, basically. Yeah. So that's actually an important idea. Uh, idea. Um, if you're having trouble explaining a pattern, you should always consider maybe you uh, you you were wrong about the pattern. If you're having trouble explaining something, that might be because it's not correct. That's why it's always good to try to explain things because it can, it's a double check to see if you got something correct uh, or yeah. not. That kind of logic can be difficult. I'll go back to my screen. So it's difficult to hold the steps in your head. It's useful to do it on paper. For example, you could write oxygen more electronegative. That's what you said in words, but it helps to write it on paper. That mean, Then you could write down that means oxygen wants to hold on to its electrons. I know you know what the, the I know you know that this is what electronegative means, but it helps to write that down rather than try to hold right. it in our mind. And then yeah. you can write down. Now you can ask, does this mean it wants to be more or less electronegative? Well, now that we see it on paper and we don't have to hold the steps in our mind, we can see this would make the oxygen less electronegative. This is a very simple technique, but it's amazing how often students don't don't use this. It's really helpful to write your thought steps down on paper so you don't have to hold them in your head and then you can see more clearly if you've made a kind of mistakes uh, in your logic. Uh, this is something I would recommend uh, that, that you try uh, doing oftentimes in, uh, in OCHEM or other uh, science courses. Uh, it helps to write down your thought steps even if there's just two or three of them. I think sometimes students are reluctant to do that during the tutoring because we're doing everything verbally but even during the tutoring if I ask you a question and you have to go through a couple thought steps um, it, go ahead and write your steps down on paper if you're getting confused, uh, and then you, it might be easier to think things through. Okay. okay. This so is something that you and I haven't worked on too much. We've mainly been focusing on how resonance affects patterns. We haven't focused as much on how electronegativity affects patterns. So I can see how you would get confused on that because we haven't worked on it so much, but th that's how to, to think about that. You don't, um, resonance is an important factor, but it's not the also only important factor. Electronegativity can be important uh, as well. Uh, what were you going to say? Oh, did you mean at that last step, oxygen is less basic? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So that helps us to illustrate that by writing things down, we can see that we made a mistake. Because <laughs> when you write it down, it's easier to check it. So you're right. Okay. That's right. I made a mistake. The oxygen is less basic. Well, that helps. That helps to clarify that. I was confused on that point. And also less nucleophilic. By the way, um, notice that the electron definition was the more useful one here. Now, when you were yeah. thinking about this before, you were thinking more about pro uh, the proton transfer. Protons, yeah. But 
Um, if you, that, I don't think that's the, bet, the, the, the most straightforward way to think about this, but if you wanted to, you could. You just have to add another thought step. If the oxygen wants to hold on to its electrons more, does that mean that the oxygen wants to gain or lose positive charges? Um, if it wants to hold on to its electrons more, then it would rather retain negative charges than donate electrons to have a positive or neutral so charge. So how would that affect its desire for positives? Does the oxygen want to be more or less positive? Uh, it or let me put the, let's just put it this way: Would the oxygen want to uh, donate or retain protons? Um, donate, it seems. How how can you tell? Well, what's the charge on an electron? On an electron is negative. And what's the charge on a proton? Positive. So the patterns for protons will always be the opposite of the patterns for electrons. Whatever an atom wants to do with its electrons is the opposite of what it wants to do with its protons. That's just a useful idea. If they have opposite charges, they're going to have opposite feelings about them. So now that we know the oxygen wants to hold on to its electrons, we know that it must want to donate, if possible, any protons, if it has any. Well, again, would that make it more or less basic? Less basic. It would make it acidic, not basic. Yes. Yeah. Acidic is the opposite of basic. In fact, you might even then put in another thought step that would mean the oxygen is acidic, which would mean the oxygen is less basic. Okay. So that's how you could analyze this using the proton definition of a, of a, of a base. Uh, and again, there's even more thought steps there, so it helps even more to write them down. It's simpler here to focus on the electron definition, but here's how we can think about the proton definition. That's why I was critical when you were saying that a base wants to receive a hydrogen. That's not as useful because yeah. it doesn't focus on the charge. The way we work this out is by remembering that protons are opposite in charge to electrons. Okay, uh, so uh, let's see, going back to your yeah, screen. I I, you know, walking through that, mm -hmm. I think one of the points that has been a little confusing for me in that regard is the defining between electronegativity and electron density. Mm -hmm. And I think just talking through this has helped clarify it a little bit that they're not synonymous, although they are related. So that electron or uh, oxygens are more electronegative. But that does not necessarily mean that it's that it has more um, electron density or more of a negative charge, so to say. That's right. Uh, In fact, if anything, they're almost the opposite of each other. Being yeah. negative makes you less electronegative. Being negative makes you less electronegative, all things being equal. That's an excellent point. This is so the point is that electronegative is kind of an unfortunate name. Uh, actually, you often find this in science. Oftentimes, it turns out that the scientists have chosen terms which make sense to the scientists, but make things harder for beginners. This is not a very useful term for a beginner, because uh, it doesn't mean the same thing as having a negative charge. In fact, it's almost the opposite of having a negative charge. If you had a negative charge, in a way, you'd want electrons less. You'd be kind of less electronegative, in a sense. Um, maybe it would help to explain where this comes from. The word negative here doesn't mean negative charge. It means lacking. You know, if something's negative, that's kind of a lack. So electronegative um, means lacking electrons, which would make you want to hold on to your remaining electrons more. So that, that's where the name originally came from. Uh, it was negative in the sense of lacking, not negative in the sense of uh, negative charge. Uh, but because that's hard to see, it makes the, the word uh, difficult uh, to interpret. So yeah, that's why whenever you think in terms of electronegative, it helps to translate that into more common sense terms. It doesn't mean negative charge, it means you want to hold on to the electrons. Yeah, electronegative doesn't mean negative charge. If anything, they're almost more opposites of each other. That's a, that's a good point. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's an important thing to clarify. Like I say, that's almost like a, a poorly chosen, chosen term, but it's important to get comfortable with it because it's so common, commonly used in chemistry. Okay, so looking at your screen again, uh, so what did we decide? Who's more basic, oxygen or nitrogen? Um, nitrogen is more basic. And why is that? Uh, because it is less electronegative, 
and is more willing to donate electrons. That's right. Okay. And who's more nucleophilic, oxygen or nitrogen? Um, nitrogen. And why is that? Because it is also more willing to donate its electrons, and that's what nucleophiles will do. They, they yes. attack, I guess, with their nucleophiles, donating them to attach to an electrophile. Excellent. So basically the, the logic was the same for both the bases and nucleophiles. So um, now it's a little harder to compare them when there's also resonance involved. It's harder to compare when there's resonance involved, and I don't really actually, it's kind of a subtle issue. I don't want to get into the details of that right now. But in any case, okay. um, the right-hand molecule would still be more basic. The right-hand molecule would be more basic. But uh, yeah, what I was thinking of there was comparing the nitrogens. And for that, it's clear that the right hand is more basic and more nucleophilic. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the right hand nitrogen is also more basic than the oxygen. But that turns out to be a, a little bit subtle, and we, we don't need to get into that. That's actually a little, probably a little bit beyond the scope of what you would be tested on in your course. So we'll just okay. go on to the next uh, example. Um, Carbon-2 is more nucleophilic because resonance reveals a hidden negative charge. That's good. However, how did you know that the significant resonance structure moves the negative charge onto carbon-2? Why doesn't the significant resonance structure move the electrons onto the phosphorus? Um, well, I know we had talked about it before. Um, and I don't have an exact explanation. I went through our notes and found it diagrammed out that way, and I can't remember the exact reason why. Okay, all right, so that might be a good thing to review. Um, so the key thing to notice here is that the phosphorus, how many bonds does that phosphorus have? The phosphorus... But first of all, by the way, what does the pH, pH 3 stand for there? Uh, wasn't it like a, a phosphate group? Okay, that's a good thing to review as well. That actually stands for a, sorry, it stands for a phenyl group. Phenyl, that's right, yeah. Um, which is different from phosphate. Remember, yeah. phosphate, I think we talked about how eight usually means oxygens with negative charges. Right. So yeah. um, it stands for phenyl groups. What, what's a phenyl group? They are benzene rings. So you can kind of see while we're using an abbreviation, because if we drew three, phen three benzene rings, that would take up a lot of space. And if you sure. recall, we discussed how it turns out the benzene rings don't actually play any role in the reactivity. So it, we may as well yeah. just abbreviate them. In any case, how many bonds then does that phosphorus have in the original picture? Um, five. So the key is it has an expanded octet. That was the issue that we talked about. That's that phosphorus right. okay. has an expanded octet. Why is that possible? Uh, because it's in the third group, third row. That's right. Okay. Yeah, but does that mean that it's going to uh, it has more or less electrons than it's happy with? It has more than it's happy with because even though it's possible for it to have an expanded octet, in a sense, it would kind of prefer a regular octet. So, would the electrons tend to move towards or away the phosphorus? Away from the phosphorus, and that's the reason why the more significant resonance structure moves the uh, pi bond away from the phosphorus, not towards it. Okay. That's that was an issue that, uh, that was kind of a weird issue that didn't come up in any of the other examples that we've seen. Anyway, this is a, that's a, that's a molecule you'll see in the second semester, so it's, it's good to know that reasoning. Uh, okay, so uh, because of the expanded octet, usually that, that's the only time we ever use that expanded octet idea to decide who was the more significant resonance structure. All right. Okay. Um, you don't need to memorize this right now, but this type of molecule is called a phosphorus illide. Uh, and it turns out that this phosphorus illide will be important for an uh, important reaction in the second semester. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the annotation. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the annotation. Thank you.